Pace explained to reporters that the Bears are ready for every scenario if a first-round trade is available. They're ready to move up. They're ready to move down. They've earned spot number 20 with their 8-8 eight and eight record last year that got them the seventh seed in the NFC. Now, a lot of this is obvious, and we've had fun with this on Twitter and elsewhere. Insert name of team can trade up can trade down or use the pick that they currently have. That pretty much applies to everyone. And the teams, the general managers, the executives, they talk in advance of the draft. Hypotheticals, for instances, what would it take to move up? What are you thinking if we would have a guy there that we like at number 12? Could we do a deal? Is it possible? You have that foundation set so when you get the 10-minute window and the team's on the clock, you can either get it done or not get it done. The thing with the Bears, though, is this. Because Sims has in his mock draft Washington trading up to number eight to take quarterback Trey Lance. They're at number 19, and the Bears are at 20. The Bears, when it comes to trading up, and this is something that Sims and I have talked about, Peter King and I talked about it. I go on the score in Chicago a couple of times a week, and it's come up there as well. Because you've got this perception slash reality that Pace is on the hot seat and that Matt Nagy, the coach of the team, are on the hot seat, even though they've been to the playoffs two of the last three years, it is kind of weird. Can you get clearance to trade up and give up future assets that you may not be there to use, for example, to get a quarterback? And then you get that quarterback and you've got a potentially mismatched set of GM, coach, and quarterback in 2022 if they do make a change and they bring in people who look at that quarterback they traded up to get and say, eh, no thank you. I, I think that it's going to take the ultimate blessing of Virginia McCaskey before they would trade up because as the Bears, you have to know, eyes wide open, you're essentially buying a problem. You're either guaranteeing jobs through 2022 or maybe beyond, or you're going to put yourself in a spot where it gets very awkward when you bring in, if you bring in, new GM, new head coach next year, and they say, oh, God, we'd love to have our first-round pick this year instead of this quarterback that we never would have drafted. Yeah, Mike, a couple things on that. It didn't work out so well, as you said, when they moved up to number two overall to take Mitchell Trubisky. We know that. It just didn't work out. And, and frankly, Ryan Pace could have lost his job over that. And some of the picks that they've made in recent years are not made in recent years because of the Khalil Mack trade. Those first rounders, they they haven't worked out quite like they had hoped they worked out. I'm not an expert on the draft by any stretch of the imagination, but people I talk to within the league tell me that the drafts in 2022 and 2023 are going to be way better than this draft. So I believe them that the next two drafts are going to be better than this draft. So if I'm a team, I am not trading draft capital for the next two years to go up and take a player who might or might not make it. I'm going to sit tight. If the quarterback falls to me that I like, great. And if he doesn't, I'm going to go get another player and hope that Andy Dalton can do enough this year to, to win for me or whether people above Ryan Pace are making that decision, whatever. Here's the other thing, Mike. We know they were all in on Russell Wilson, right? Russell Wilson could be traded after this year. He could be traded after June 1st, for that matter. Aaron Rodgers could be traded after this year. Probably not going to go to Chicago, but he could be traded. Deshaun Watson, we know they had interest in Deshaun Watson. He will be traded at some point. I think if you're the Bears, you sit tight and you either wait to draft a quarterback in 2022 or you wait to trade for one of those guys. People forget all these guys could be on the market next year, and it could be a great quarterback uh, driven free agency or trade or whatever next year if if these teams get rid of their quarterbacks. And it looks like they could do that. So some of these teams are going to be sitting pretty next year that don't get their quarterback this year. And we know that the Bears reportedly tried to make a run to get Russell Wilson, but they just didn't have enough ammunition to get yeah. Seattle's attention. And also, pre-June 1, Seattle takes a $39 million cap charge to trade Russell Wilson post June 1 it's 13 million with the other 26 million hitting the cap next year that could be a post June 1 trade that could be a deal that gets done draft weekend frankly that goes through June 2 we have seen time and again trades get done unofficially late January like the Alex Smith trade to Washington a couple of years ago there have been other trades this year the Jared Goff trade Matthew Stafford that was done in late January early February and then it's just pending same thing can happen now pending we're going to put the paperwork through on june 2nd to manage the cap hit that still is a possibility i guess the bears would still be a possibility although we'll see how that goes also 
as it relates to the Bears. Oh, one last thing about Chicago, because I think the wild card in all of this is team president Ted Phillips, who has been there since 1999. Yeah. He's been the one who's hired the general managers and the coaches. If he is going to be on the hot seat as well, then maybe there's a powerful ally for Pace and Nagy if they are cajoling for permission to trade up. If Phillips says, I'd do it because Philip knows, Phillips knows, excuse me, that maybe I'm going to be gone too, that could be the thing that gets it done. But if the Bears would make that move up, you'd have to assume that at the highest levels of the organization, they're comfortable with what that means. What that means is Pace and Nagy had better be staying or you end up with a mess in 2022 when there's a new coach or a new GM and a quarterback that they may not have wanted. Linebacker Roquan Smith, the Bears have exercised the 2022 option on him. May 3rd is the deadline for doing it. We're hearing about more and more teams that are going ahead and exercising the option pre-draft. Most notably, the Panthers, for whatever reason, who knows, they have, a, they have a strong plan. They'll tell us what it is when they feel compelled to do so. They have not yet exercised that Sam Darnold fifth-year option and perhaps all that that implies. And, you know, I, we played the other day Scott Fitterer, the GM of the team, when he explained that. And I always like to see the actual comments because you get a chance to read the poker face or lack thereof. I think that they aren't going quarterback at eight, but they'd like others drafting behind them to think they are and maybe be tempted to leapfrog the Panthers and push down the board the non-quarterback that they would really like to get. That was my read when Fitterer explained it because he made kind of a little smile that made me think, yeah, this is a little bit of a gamesmanship thing here. This isn't we're going to pull the rug out from under Sam Darnold. This is there's no reason to do it. And if we're not going quarterback, even if there's one there at eight, let's go ahead and make the Broncos think there is. Maybe the Broncos will jump up to seven, take a guy we were never going to take, and then the guy we want is more likely to be there. Yeah, it makes perfect sense, Mike. Or maybe they want to trade down, too, and acquire some of those picks for 2022 and 2023 that they can get that we know the draft's going to be better in those two years. So, yeah, they they have had a great poker face so far and what they're trying to do. But, Mike, back to the fifth-year options, too, on all these guys. You know, when teams pick those up, that tells you that they've drafted pretty well, right? Most times when they pick up those fifth-year options. So you look at a team like Chicago, they didn't pick it, pick it up on Mitchell Trubisky. They didn't pick it up on Kevin White for obvious reasons. They initially picked it up on Leonard Fo Floyd and then said, see you later and get out. So they have failed in that fifth-year option. And then you look at a team like the Bucks, Mike. This is the fifth year in a row they've picked up that fifth-year option. And, yeah, Jameis is gone. I get that. But Mike Evans, Vita Vea. Vernon Hargraves, O.J. Howard, they've picked up those fifth-year options because they've been for really good players. And that's, to me, one reason that's kind of overlooked in, this, in the Bucks Super Bowl season. Yes, they got Tom Brady, and they needed him to get them over the top, but they have drafted pretty darn well the last few years. Other and than kickers. The thing to, the, yeah, well, that's right. That's right. No second-round kickers or any-round kickers. But the thing to keep in mind, this year is the first time that that fifth-year option yeah. is fully guaranteed when exercised. It used to be it was guaranteed for injury only, so you could still cut the guy before the first day of the league year of that fifth year. Now, the moment you exercise it, that money is locked in. That money is guaranteed. That player is either on your team or not on your team, regardless, you're paying him in that fifth year. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.